Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And in this video, I'm going to take you through all the brand new features of Unity 6.2. Usually, people show you these updates just on a web page, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you every single feature within the editor, whether it's big or small. I'm going to go through everything that you need to know, and you can comment down below if you like any of the new features or you need some questions answering. And I will put annotations all across the timeline so you can skip on to features that you might want to learn about. And if you do like the video, make sure to throw a like and make sure you're subscribed because it helps me out massively. And do be sure to check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets or projects you cannot find anywhere else. Now we're going to look at the new feature called Mesh LOD and it's all about creating level of details for meshes when you import them so it's all about reducing the polygon count and improving performance whilst keeping a very minimal memory footprint. So in this example here we've got a monster that's about 36,000 triangles so it's a relatively high poly creature, nothing out of the ordinary really but when you import any mesh just like this one you can select the imported mesh that you want to use if not you can drag anything into your scene and if you go to the renderer you'll find the mesh that the object uses and you can just find that within your project setting now in the inspector usually on the right hand side you'll have the import settings further down you'll have something which is a tick box called generate mesh lod's and all you need to do from there is hit apply then if you go back to your project panel find the model that you were just using Go to the mesh filter slightly below and then you'll see a representation of your model there. In the little scroll bar just above, you can cycle through the LOD levels that the object has. And then when you move away from any asset within your game, the further away that it is from your camera, it will do it automatically and reduce the resolution. You can change that on a per object basis if you adjust the LOD selection bias. Right, if you move it lower, it will mean that the LODs don't come in quite as soon. Or if you make it higher, it will make them start earlier, depending on your asset. Now, if you want a project-wide example, you can go to Edit, Project Settings. And then when you're there, you can navigate to Quality. And further down, you'll have the Mesh LOD threshold, which you can reduce or increase depending on how late or early you want it to affect objects. But remember, the override is per object in the actual mesh renderer. But again, this is a feature that's meant to happen in the background, so you're most likely never going to see it unless you specifically add the wireframe and you watch the resolution change. And you can even watch my full video where I detail all the features, additional features, and all the customizations that you can make. And if you're somebody who's a fan of 2D features, and these changes are for the sprite editor, which is a preview sprite changes in the scene view. So when you tick that, you'll be able to see rec transform and pivot position changes in the scene view if you need it. Now you do need to make sure that in package manager, so window, package management and package manager, you go to Unity registry and make sure 2D sprite is actually installed. Now there's another cool new feature that you can add and it's called 2D enhancers. And if you install that, you will get this little tab down the left hand side. It is all involved with AI. So you can generate, you can refine, you can upscale, you can remove the background, pixelate. So let me just give you an example. I can choose the pixelate tab. It has the generations for the AI. It has the settings of how big you want the pixels to be. And you can just literally hit generate. Once that's run through, it only takes a little bit of time. You can select the preview in here and you can see how it changes if you want. What you can do is you can just drag that into your textures. You might want to convert that to Sprite 2D and UI, and then you can open that in the Sprite editor and you can do all your changes as you could normally expect. You've got a brand new garbage collection option on scene load. So usually Unity would get rid of any unused assets and things in memory when you load a scene just to save on memory usage. But sometimes if you've got a lot of different assets in there, it can make loading scenes very slow and very sluggish. So you've got an option to untick it. So when you move scenes, it won't do it. And you could find this within edit and project settings. And if you move to the editor, you can find under scene handling, the forced asset on load and GC on scene load. And also, if you're a fan of the UI toolkit, they now support the world space UI. So you can position 3D UIs in the world, which you couldn't previously. And the way to do this is the render mode of your panel settings is originally could only do screen space overlay. Now you can set that to world space and then you can start using the UIs in that particular way. And there is loads of extra information on the documentation if you're a fan of UI toolkit. 
There's also a customization for text rendering with the new text element dot post process text vertices, which is an API to modify the mesh vertices of each glyph immediately before UI toolkit renders them. So you can customize position, tint, UV controls, and text at a very low level. There is also a brand new advanced text generator, which allows you to do things like best fit and automatically adjust sizes based on containers. So it enhances flexibility. Then if you do want to enable this, you can go to edit project settings. And if you select UI toolkit on the left, and then you can enable advanced text generator at the very top. Then you'll be able to apply this by selecting any visual element, going to the inspector tab and go into the inline styles and text and go to the text generator drop down when select advanced. There is actually a brand new graphics feature, which is called the pre pass layer mask. And you can see that in your URP renderer asset It's called the pre pass layer mask. And you can select a layer here. And this works by choosing a layer that objects would have to be included in the depth pre pass. So if you've got an asset, which maybe uses a custom render feature, or it has a custom shader doesn't specifically get taken into account by let's say the decal system or the ambient occlusion, this will allow them to work properly and to allow them to be rendered as long as they're on the very particular layer. I wanted to take you over a few things that have been updated with HDRP specifically, and the DLSS that Unity had has been upgraded to DLSS for super resolution, which will have enhanced upscaling for performance and image quality too. And for any local volume component, like you can see here, this sort of ground smoke that's in the scene, you'll be able to fine tune the scaling relative to specific objects in the scene with a new scale mode. And you can see that in the inspector on the scale mode at this side, which is inherit from hierarchy or scale invariant. So you can adjust these if they're relevant settings to you. There's a new water sample in the water samples package featuring a deformation map using the spline package that Unity have added. And if you are in HDRP, you can go to window, package management and package manager. And if you go to the in project tab and you go to the high definition and render pipeline and you go to their samples, you can install their water samples, which is from their package. And you can head over to the current with splines and this one has a demo with the Glacier scene, which has brand new information on current with splines, the water surface debug and the spline to texture. And it's got a brand new spline container to be able to do cutouts and deformation within water. As of currently recording this in 6.2, we do still have Unity AI, which is in beta, which is not activated by default. So you won't get in here and it starts learning from any of your stuff and remember because unity ai is still in the beta phase you've got as many points and you can do as many generations as you want so when you do click on the ai button at the top click open the assistant or try a new generator i'm just going to start by opening the assistant and you can see that we need to install an ai package and i'll just hit yes to install and now when we've got this installed you can click down on the drop down of the ai tab and we can just click to open the assistant we get a chat pop out box which allows us to attach any game object and have different shortcuts where we can ask get examples or run of code or we can run specific commands for the editor so i'll run through these basically so ask you can ask it any unity related question so I just ask it, what post-processing effects are the best for my realistic neighborhood scene that I've got in the background? And it'll give me some examples of ambient occlusion, bloom, color grading, motion blur, and different things. And it'll tell you how to implement this. You'll need a post-processing volume, a volume profile, and a global profile. And then you can expand on any of these responses. And I do have a full video using Assistant, and it can help you with those mundane tasks like renaming, duplicating, and all things like that. And it can do that automatic and you can check that out in the full video which i'll put down below and then i just ask him the exact details on adding the volume to my scene and it gives me very detailed instructions on how to create the game object add the component now i use the run command and i just asked if it can create me an empty game object with a post processing volume on it and then rename it to whatever i want because maybe i don't really know where to get this post processing from because maybe i don't know how to find it and you see it'll create me an empty game object it'll add the volume component and make sure it's set to global we can hit run there and you can see now I've got an empty game object may, named main scene post process and it's set to global and it's ready for me to add the brand new component to it. You can actually use things within your scene. So let's say we've got this um, road barricade that we want. I'm going to just drag it into the attached objects. And when we use that, what I might also do is I might select my road asset 
So I'm going to want to put barriers all the way down this road. So I'm going to then ask it with the run command. And I just ask to duplicate that roadblock all the way down this road in just even increments and then be able to give random rotations to make them feel natural. So then it outputs that the roadblock here will be used duplicated along the road between the spacing of two units and each block will be randomly rotated on the Y axis to make it feel natural. And I will just hit run. And then you can see the output on the road just behind us because I didn't specify whereabouts on this entire game object it should be, but it did a spacing of two with some random rotation for each to give it more of a natural feel. So these are just a couple of examples. And of course, you can use the shortcut in code to ask it code specific questions. Now you have a bunch of generators that you can use. So you can create animation, material, sound, sprite, or texture. One of the newest ones, which is pretty cool, is the sound generation. So you can take any text that you want. So create a gunshot in this case, and we can have the generation at two seconds. We can create four, and then you can have a sound reference which you can dictate how strong or how similar you want it to be to your current reference if you wanted to make more or you can even use your own microphone or something to create your own sound effects to base them off and i've got a bunch of generations that have been produced and i quite like this one here really what you can do is you can right click and promote this one to an asset so you've got this one as its own clip it's going to call that loud gunshot and what you can even do now is if you click on the asset you can go to the inspector and you can click on the little button in the corner which is called trim and what this allows you to do is allows you to play pause it allows you to loop and it allows you to edit the envelope or trim the sound so if you do want to trim it you can take away different parts of the beginning and the end if you need to make this shorter or you can even edit the envelope to make it so that it fades in at the beginning and gets louder at a particular time if you want to edit this as you would and you can then just click save and then you overwrite whatever's there and it will create the new sound effect then we've also got a generator which is called creating a material i want to maybe replace this road texture i've got i'm just going to type in something called galvanized steel i'll put the count as four and then i'm going to use a pattern which is already created by unity you could make your own little alpha pattern but maybe i want some galvanized steel with these little markings in it and then we can just press to generate now we've got a bunch of generations here and when we select each of them it will replace a texture preview in this corner because it will update the material that it created for us and you'll be able to see the base map that it includes here you can select the base map and you can see it's a resolution 512 by 512 i'm just going to add this to my road and create some more tiling on our material that it's created so if i really zoom in you can see it here so you can click on the one that you have here and then you can go to the tab which is called upscale and then it will take it and it will upscale this to a much more detailed resolution. So it'll usually double the resolution from 512 to 124 and so on. So now you'll be able to select on the new generation and you'll be able to see with the base map there, it's changed this and upscaled it and doubled the resolution. Now from there, we can select PBR and you can select which maps that it generates for PBR and we can click generate that one. Then when we generate the PBR map, it will generate the base map, metallic map, normal maps, height maps, and occlusion. And you can still use the old generations, which is say this old base map that we had, which we want to maybe apply to the new one, because when it does generate new textures, it tries to take out as much lighting detail as possible. So you have the cleanest textures. So then you can see this texture within our scene here that we've generated and can now use. We can also generate new sprites with the generators and you can choose a particular model that you want to base your sprite on. And Unity have lots of different options along with customizations with UI and icons, concept art and other examples within there. So I've just chosen the RPG imagery icons. I've created a potion icon, four count and the dimensions of 1024 and I'll just hit generate. It created a bunch of quite cool looking icons without me being very specific on what I wanted. You can choose to remove the background if you wish. You could choose to upscale if you want. You can choose to pixelate. You can recolor by choosing a new palette and new color, or you can in-paint by specifically painting over areas which you might not like. If you don't like that top, you can just paint over it 
and regenerate that yourself. And the last one is we can generate from text to motion or video to motion when it comes to animation. So all I did with the text to motion is just write jump and I hit generate and then it did a fairly good jump animation which the feet stayed on the point that we wanted. They had a nice shift up between the legs and a nice transition back to the bottom that looked rather natural. And you can use video to motion that if you add any video reference here, it will do a fairly decent copy of what the video is showcasing, as long as the video is nice and clear and it doesn't have really crazy complex motion. There is actually brand new features to Shader Graph. It includes a brand new append node, which combined two floats of vectors as inputs to create a single new vector. And it's a great way to help combine these and you no longer need to use split nodes or anything to combine them together. And this brand new dynamic branching options, this is directly used for the Shader Graph keyword definition parameter. And this allows you to balance the impact of keywords on performance during build time or at runtime. There is also improvements to the support of material property draws and attributes. So they've added read only, custom attributes, enum, and a new slider mode to be able to add floats and properties of different types with a nice slider. You'll notice that within build profiles now, it does have a message that in 6.2, diagnostic data is on by default for new projects and you can learn more or dismiss that there. There is actually a brand new build profile. If you click add build profile and you can add a brand new web profile, which you need to install the package by a Unity Hub, but it has a bunch of configurations ready for applications that want to be released on mobile or desktop. Specific for Android platforms, they now have support for Android SDK 36. And for all new Android specific projects, there will be brand new application not responding errors in the Unity Diagnostics feature, which you can find in your dashboard. There's a brand new Unity Vehicles package for ECS, which covers a wide range of vehicle types and configurations. And you can actually get this from the package manager. If you go to the drop down and install package by name, and we just put com.unity.vehicles, and we just hit install there, then you can head over to the samples tab. When it's installed, you've got the minimal and the advanced vehicle sample. And once you've installed the samples, you want to head to Unity registry and start typing in entities and you want to install the entities graphics package in here because then it will allow components and systems to be rendered. I've just opened the advanced vehicle scene so you can check this out for yourself. So when you run this scene, it's considered medium in terms of realism and it's got the ability to adjust drifting, controls with the car, acceleration. It's got loads of different ramps and other things. It reminds me of sort of a Hot Wheels or something like that where you can do loop-de-loops and other style things where you can see that this card does grip onto other objects so it's a fairly good little thing to mess around with if you want to get a gr to grips with the ECS system unity do also have brand new diagnostic data control so if you head to edit and project settings and you head to services and diagnostics you can see that they have brand new control of deciding where your data will go and what it will be used for so by default in unity 6.2 the diagnostics data is enabled and the only data here is to help unity improve game performance improve the engine stability and compatibility and if you click on one of those links you'll be taken to the web page i do have a full video explaining all of this with all the in-depth details so i do hope that you like this video make sure to throw a like and subscribe because it helps out massively do check out all the sales and all the content down in the description because i can always keep it updated and check out my patreon too to get over 225 different scripts assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else massive thank you to very Shuthan and party of 10 for their amazing support and thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers